I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I uh, asked Lily if there was anything she wanted to relay for Cherry Port, and um, there wasn't, so we can move on to the tree one in Um, that was a technical difficulty here, but um, let's see, what do I have to report? Well, I, I moved to the Spring Grove Cemetery. <laughs> So that's official. My other office is completely cleaned out. I left nothing wow. but dust behind. Wow, that's a project. Huh? <laughs> Lots of it. <laughs> Lots of it. Did Nicole and I look at that thing? Was Anne here today? She wasn't. Okay, I'll talk to How long have you been in that other office? Uh, it would have been nine years in March. Mm -hmm. So. So you had to get all organized to move everything, right? Nope. I just, just moved got it. up one day and said, "Okay, this is it. I'm ready to go." I knew, you know, it's like when you know it's time to retire, you just go ahead and do it. <laughs> uh, so still kind of working out the bugs. We've got probably a couple of days worth of cleaning and just sorting and organizing. And hopefully by the uh, beginning of next week, I should be pretty well back where I was before, but I'll have less headaches to worry about. Um, the only pressing thing, let me see what's on here, isn't it? Uh, the public shade tree hearing for the tree at 38 Star Street was held before Thanksgiving. Uh, there were no objections, so the, the uh, applicant asked if they could remove the tree because of the changes related to the change of the position of the house. So without any complaints, I'm going to allow the removal and he's going to mitigate for the loss of the tree and plant. Uh, a couple of trees in front of the house again. So I, mean, I think what he's going to end up doing is he's just going to pay into the fund. So we will end up planting the trees. So that's how that kind of works. So I'm just working on getting the documentation signed and um, I'm hoping that it'll get it taken down in the next week or two and then do the temporary driveway. Um, and I think that's really, that's really about it for the tree warning report. Okay. Uh, anything with the community forestry grant? So the uh, no, I have heard absolutely nothing from DCR, which is uh, atypical. Mm -hmm. My um, we may hear something before or a little bit after the mastery warrants and foresters mm -hmm. um, annual conference, which is the first week. Which I'll email you the information um, once I get online. Uh, That's in January. Yeah, it's this it's like the second, the second week of January, I think this year. So it's usually a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's a three-day event or two-day event. I can't remember. And DCR does a DCR does a, 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 a forest health update. You know, the DCR does an update and they do forest health right in that time frame. Julie Coop usually gets up and kind of um, rattles off the award winners or. Sometimes she, in the past she hasn't. I've gotten letters after the fact, so it depends how fast they are. But their their turnaround time is pretty quick. The other the other um, thing is is that um, I got to meet with Doug McDonald, who's the stormwater manager, who actually just sent me an email. I just I will check with him. This is how this works. So they're actually. Wayne is actually have apparently has some money to do some work in that parking lot with, and, uh, with GTA and Niche, which are both engineering firms. Um, they were requesting that I meet with them on Friday um, to talk about the seven locations where we were going to place trees. And I need, I guess, I need to understand exactly what they're going to be doing. I think it is more related to the actual stormwater um, storm. It's related to the sustainability and resiliency project that we're, I'm working on with Wayne and others. And the Old Mill Riverbed was identified as one of those places that they would like to um, have some regeneration of the, the existing Mill Riverbed to recognize it. So they're actually, it's one of the 10 locations that was identified. So there's money to design these different 10 projects and one of them was the Old Mill Riverbed restoration. 
which will be rolled out at some point. So niches. Where's the old mill river bed? So it actually starts at uh, Vets Field mm -hmm. by the by the Felt Building, yeah. and if you're walking on the bike path, mm -hmm. you can walk to the right. There's a wall. Yeah. It's covered <coughs> over. That that is the mill. That was the mill river bed, and that ran right through downtown. Right. That actually was piped, and then it came out right over. Uh, on the other side of the old South Street parking lot, which still has a huge drainage swell. And there's still a big culvert there that actually takes, it takes a lot of surface water from all around the town. So I guess I don't understand the restoration part of it. I think the restoration would be to actually make it a natural waterway again, not necessarily have the Mill River run through it, but actually restore it hmm. um, to its vegetative state if it were a, a waterway, because it, it does have a lot of significance. It's now completely overgrown, it's full of debris, basically run down so I'm not I'm not really sure I don't have any answers as to what the restoration would look like at this point that's why it's in design but it was a place that was identified to see if there we could do a restoration and, and it goes near the parking lot at the table it goes right underneath the parking lot there's a huge oh. color <laughs> yeah. so right out here um, it actually kind of dives where the uh, well, uh, the McDonald houses, mm -hmm. it kind of just, the water just kind of goes into a large pipe. Oh. It goes underneath uh, Old South Street, and underneath the Old South Street parking lot, and mm -hmm. then comes back out. So if you're actually walking on the bike path, you look onto the right over the little fence, you can see this huge ditch right there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the actual, that's the actual uh, part of the Mill Riverbed. So does the it region. run down behind the lots that are on Pleasant and Con? Yeah, what it does is it there is water down right there. there is so it runs i don't have a map at the moment but it runs down behind there it goes underground comes back out goes behind millbank place that's why mm -hmm. they call it millbank place right and then it goes back underneath pleasant street and then it goes underneath the trestle and comes back out of the wastewater treatment plant well that'd be so great if, if that parking lot got a little improvement yes so i'm curious as to see exactly what they're they're planning on doing you know they, they they have questions because they want to know exactly what we applied for how much work we're going to do in the parking lot um and if our work will be you know obviously will our work be disturbed if they're going to do this work later on can we do the work in conjunction mm -hmm. you know i don't know if that means they want to dig it up and upgrade the utility that's in there i don't know the answer to that question but i will know more on friday could it be something like oh we're going to make the we're going to make the parking lot islands like water accepting? Possibly. I don't know the answer to that question. That would be nice. We'll that sway all that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Create all the soil for us. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So we may end up actually, depending upon what they choose to do, we may, if they actually are going to try to revert it to a more of a, a green space than it is presently, then our project may have to change a little bit we may have to modify what we're doing I'm not sure mm -hmm. I don't know any of those answers that stands we applied for the grant mm -hmm. if DCR awards us the grant then we will have to work with niche and planning you know, and or GZA because I think both of the comp both are actually going to be doing the design work or competing for design the design money uh, or maybe they're working together right I'm not sure I haven't had a chance to meet with Doug this is why I wanted to meet with him before I had we talked about this, but I didn't get a chance to because he was gone, and then it was the holidays, and so on and so forth. So. But this is good that they're interacting with you. Yeah. I mean, this is really good. Yeah. Like really good. I'm also the I'm all, all other item of business that I should have mentioned previous to this was that I'm also been selected to be on the Energy and Sustainability <laughs> Commission, or uh, the representative for our department to that group. So that'll be the. And taking over the director's role, so that'll be interesting. So the well, director's role on that commission, mm -hmm. yep. it's yep. consistent with your new yep. job responsibilities. I think for all so. Of this. I think so. I'm going to learn more about sustainability than I probably ever really thought <laughs> I ever wanted to. Or uh, I'm not going to be an expert by by any means, but I think it's actually kind of helpful because it kind of rounds. Every, I mean, it really just plays around actually what we're all trying to accomplish here. As, as as like individual groups like the individual pockets i think me being on this uh committee uh, or on this will actually kind of tie it all together for us mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. well, yes yeah. getting green infrastructure included in the 
and yep. sustainability discussion. Yep. This is huge. Yep. Wow. When did those? When did that start? Um, it's a good question. I'll. I'll. I don't know the answer to that question. I think it's this month. Uh -huh. I'm a little confused today, if you can't tell. My computer doesn't work, so I'm like lost now. Mm -hmm. You remember the days where I couldn't even open this thing and make it work. Mm -hmm. Now I can't run without it. That's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it happens to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm up again. <laughs> okay, so what I'm, I'm going to pass out um, the... Oh, I just wanted to make note of everyone that... In our tree, uh, this is our plan of the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is actually, I got it about a little late, but normally this would be okay. attached to the uh, back of the agenda. So we want to make sure that we actually okay. are looking at this. Um, we'll probably have plan. to see if we can make one. Maybe we can. Yeah, I kind of, we make it really tiny. Yeah. Right. Well, it would be good to have this in the back, and then we probably ought to review this uh, at least every commission meeting to kind of see where we're at. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but anyways, that's that's in this packet, FYI, to you. So, I'm going to pass around to you the two uh, applications that were submitted, so you can take a look at them. This exists in a team drive that we all, we're all we will all have access to eventually. But Karen and I are still we haven't really had a, we haven't had a chance to meet to talk about how we're going to build the team drive. But I think again this would be a bigger picture thing where we actually take all that data that we have everywhere and actually have it in the team drive, and we all try to manage the team drive the same way if possible. But these exist in the team drive, um, and this is what it looks like. So if you want to take a couple minutes and review them both. If you have any questions. And then are we voting on one tonight? I, I think that what we should do personally is I think we should just review them and we should probably put it again on the agenda for January. Okay. Because January, I believe we're going to have two meetings in January. Actually, yeah. we, so we might be having a meeting in December, Rich. We may have another meeting in December. Well, I, I checked with Lily and okay. um, she said just pull the group again. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So one reason to delay is that somebody rich or dry or somebody has to go and see it. Go look. Yeah, what? that's what I find. Right. Oh, I yeah. know that, that we planted a couple trees on this street near the applicant's house. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember like huge other spaces that we're definitely wanting. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the darn spaces, but you know, it's not like a, there might, it might be less than three feet. Oh, whatever. I'm not sure what it is. What it is that they're able to do there. The other one,
Is Monroe perpendicular to South Street? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we planted uh, a couple of linden trees there recently. Nor the DAR. Um, yeah, is. I saw DAR on here. Remember the DAR we didn't plant right in front. Actually, yeah, we we skipped one. They didn't. One. No, that was the next to the DAR because they had some new beds they were planting in their yard. Oh, that's right. But that was the, the setback. Yeah, they, yeah. they didn't want a setback there on the corner. And actually, in front of the DAR, we skipped a spot. We, we planted the tree down in front of the DAR. Three, two, two or three trees. Hmm. Okay. That's underwater. So this is one row. Does it connect? I guess it just goes back into that area. So do we have a like protocol of how we're going to decide who gets it? I mean, do we or no, do we I mean, it by discussion? I think it's going to be by discussion, and I think that probably would, would be advisable that um, any connect. I would think that any individual on the commission that has a connection with any of these people or a particular vested interest would probably recuse themselves from voting on it. So it's. So it, you know, there it's it's, tra it's transparent in a sense, and that there's no bias on anyone's part. Not that anyone would, you know, do that, but because we only have two ap applicants at this point, um, and I think that we we I think I learned I think we need to do a better job next year actually getting the word out mm -hmm. uh, to a lot of other sources. And uh, Lily actually right. I think tried to contact the Gazette like three times and really just had absolutely no luck whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Did someone that lives on Orchard Street write a letter in though and just say something? Yes, uh, the professor from UMass. Yeah, yeah. Did it said something about yeah. apply for yeah. a neighborhood. But I think we were looking to have a, a little more uh, a little more advertising, a little, a little push. So I think it would be we have to find a, because presently the only way that was put out there was through the the mayor's um, press release that mm -hmm. was re, you know was regurgitated a couple of times, but I I don't necessarily think that the press release actually yeah has the biggest reach. I mean I think the different list serves that we have. One of the other things we could do too is we could probably target um, some of the ward the. Um, the one way to get it out is like the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association yeah. is, would be a good example. Um, but I wasn't able to really make contact and, and, re, and the way that we actually contact or the way that we communicate is really that communication should come from the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't necessarily reach out to them and blast the mayor's press release. I would ask the mayor's office to do that unless I, they grant the permission uh, you know, to do that kind of thing. So I think we need to, I think we need to be a little, a little more crafty as to how we get the word out. Through the city councilors? Yes, and because this is a, uh, this is a, uh, you know, a program that's sponsored by the mayor, you know, basically by the mayor's office through the mm -hmm. tree warden and the commission, it really, that, that um, information, should, you know, as long as they approve it, we can share it with them after the initial one. So next year, mm -hmm. next year, we would probably do the same thing, whoever our, selected uh, neighborhood is we will do a, uh, a press release to the mayor's office and that would be the time to make sure we mention that we you know we are also accepting applications at this time uh, for fall of uh, 2020 um, please uh, submit your application by this date blah, blah 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 to this website with the link on it and then we would take that and, and just regurgitate that ourselves to other listservs Maybe we need a subcommittee, like not this minute, but maybe we need like a subcommittee in the new year to, you know, come up with ideas. Meet, well, maybe come up with ideas and then present it to the Public Shade Tree Commission and, and you know, so you're not having to like do it all. You know, like communication just, strategy. Kind yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About how do we, you know? Well, last yeah. year around this time, Lily, Molly, and I created it. Right. Um, so maybe we can pick up on that just as that part of our subcommittee room. Because um, I just think, wow, we've come a long way. We created this from scratch, had the um, practice planting. Now it's posted. People are fine. Right. Um, right. But yeah, there the were step. criteria identified 
um, at some point in the process when of this neighborhood planting process early on I was involved in some degree yes and we identified criteria social justice right. yes walkable oh I, 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 plan, I don't know whether it was in the criteria or not but when you look at two different planes the two, they're, they're drastically different from the, the, when you get into this details and specifics because the plan on this prospect yeah has a whole bunch of setback trees attached to it, yeah. which from my point of view, is like a huge amount of footwork done mm -hmm. that might never get done if the neighbor did it. So he's got like, I don't know, three or six. Well, plus they're under, it's, there's wires on that side of the street, so you'd have a better chance to have, you know. Right, so he's got three or six, yeah, he's got three or six trees that are setbacks, so you can plant actual shade here. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you can do that here too, but but the thing is that to actually get mm -hmm. the setback trees is for us, Rich, the others. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Well, it's a huge piece of work. So it's, whoever's reviewing the applications, that could be one of the things we're looking for. Yeah, the fact that Ken's already done that, mm -hmm. you don't want to lose that mm -hmm. because that's that that really is I think going to evolve to be a large part of the work that the whole tree program in Northampton has to take on is set back is set back because we will begin to um, use up the best tree belts not too distant mm -hmm. time from now mm -hmm. and when we do we're going to want to plant set back trees so I see these as very not <coughs> not not the, not the same um, from that perspective yeah I think there's an uh, advantage of Ken's and it is near my neighborhood, so I should <laughs> disclaimer. Um, I live closer to that one. But um, he came to the meeting. He learned about what the setback. He learned about the whole tree program and talked repeatedly, reached out to people. So he positioned this application differently because he learned about that. Whereas I don't know if the other applicant knew about that. Well, that's a, that's or a funny thing. Had the time to come or the no, whatever right. all to come. They're not exactly reach out on equal footing when it terms in terms of like getting assistance with yeah. the application process. Mm. Yeah. That's right. So how many trees are in the, the on Ross Street? That's another thing too. Eighteen trees. Eighteen trees? On the prospect stream. No, on the uh, how many on the other one? Uh, so just ten. Well the overall is 20 trees yeah, on tree belt six in setback, so 26 on the prospect one. Oh, yeah. And the overall description from Monroe. Wait, where did you get 26? The different sections, right after phone number is project description. And in the second sentence, oh wait, trees. I'm sorry, 20, oh, 20 trees and First six sentence. proposed setbacks, so that's 26. Okay. Wait, where are you looking? Um, let's see. Oh, you're on the Ken one. I thought you were looking at the, yeah, that's the Crossroads Street. The blue one oh. says, Monroe, bring back the tree belt. Oh, there it is, 25 to 40 along tree belt. Top of it. Right, page two. Right, and then there are the setbacks. Too. Oh, on the Monroe Street? No, no, I'm sorry, no. no. Where does it get 40 from? That seems like a lot. Yeah. Where so, just... right here. Right there. 20. Oh, you're looking at the, I'm looking at the Monroe Street one. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so mm -hmm. So he did 10, yeah, you know, 25 address. Was there only, was there a limit of 10 spaces to fill in? Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's, that's, that's okay. So then, then he just lists the addresses. Yep. Yeah. It appears so he doesn't know about setback. Program. Additional setback public board. trees could be planted in front Yeah, he may not know what that is. Or yeah, he, he read all, all this stuff on the yeah. website and all that stuff. Yeah. So. Well, I guess that, that's the, what we need to yeah, be aware of difference because if it's a bunch of underwater trees as opposed to set up a world of difference. That would be actually if we revise this application form in the future, it would be good to 
have a fruit tree? Is it an underwater tree or not? Well, I, you know, I can go out and look. Yeah. But whether it's a setback tree or not, um, mm -hmm. that's first of all, it gives them the idea of going out to their neighbors and soliciting that, mm -hmm. and that's got more value because we can just run them down anytime we want and put the trees in the tree belt. We don't need the neighborhood to, mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. us do that. That's true. That's but but you can't getting the setback trees is a piece of work. And is there? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, um, is there on? I haven't looked at this, that, you know, application online. But is there a um, like instruction section? You know, where it would say, yeah, whatever. We favor, you know, we encourage setback plantings. It's mentioned in the you actual can con It is. Yep. You can contact yep. us for assistance, or I mean, and it says what they are for the setback trees. I believe so. I can't tell you because I can't connect. Right, we can just do a yeah. link to that to the CR. So, Rick, before we meet next time, you or I should go and look and see what we're working with. I've already looked at, okay. what, at what the other one is. Yep. Do you, you want me, me to do it? You want to do it? No, we'll do it together. Together? Yep. Okay. We'll go to Monroe. Cool. So, we should table this until. Yeah, so next steps. Um, do, remind me. We already discussed this. Do we set a time that we want to notify these applicants by? Well, they've, they've been notified that they have we've received their applicants mm -hmm. uh, applications. I should say that I don't I don't think we gave them a time as to when we would be mm -hmm. awarding it. But I, my assumption would be is that we should probably discuss that at the next meeting mm -hmm. and then probably award one of them in early January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would give them time to prepare, you know, and then of course it gives. Mm -hmm. Rob and myself time to go find the nursery stock for these locations. So that needs to be on the agenda yeah. for next meeting, whenever that is. Yes. Yep. The next meeting would be to next discuss and decide. But the follow up oh. meeting is decide, right? Yeah, I mean I mean you, you, we could we could just put on the agenda for the next meeting to discuss the two neighborhood planting applications and um, you know, nothing would preclude us from taking the vote that evening. Okay. You know, we could take a vote. We could. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Or yeah. if people don't feel ready, we could wait till the next one. Right. So what I'll do is I will actually punch this up in, okay. in the email and I'll send it out to everyone so everyone can see it. So yeah. 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 Electronic. Electronic. Yeah. yeah. I was only able to get uh, these printed out of the computer today or out of the uh, inbox today. All right. That's a plan. Well, that's exciting. I like what Jen's getting at, though, and Molly's idea of combine the, in the instructions. Learn about, you know, yeah. read about the sh setback program, mm -hmm. and read, you know, have a link to benefits mm -hmm. of setback trees, mm -hmm. benefits of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, limits of underwire, mm -hmm. something like that in the instruction part, mm -hmm. and also the implications of setback tree, those legal implications about. Mm -hmm. um, Mm. Yeah, they can click through the setback, setback tree. program. Yeah, no, we're getting into it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then also, uh, what you said, I think, for equity purposes, is making it clear that if you want some help, yeah, you know, yes, that right. contact us or Rich or whoever, yeah. and somebody will talk to you. Yeah, meet with you. Right. You know. This yeah. year was hard. Do sure. It was oh, just yeah. All oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Last minute. Yeah. Before. Yeah. yeah. This is always up, so Yeah. Next year should be. But I think the equity time. piece that you've been talking about is very important. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Somebody That's in the, the know. Point of the yeah. Exercise. Somebody in the know may you know. And right. then. And we can encourage people to come to a meeting. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Did you get all that? <laughs> Where are we all talk at once? Yeah. We're ahead of schedules. Uh, fall 2018 planting. Rich and Rob, would you like to give an update on planting and the tags? I haven't finished my tally, I'm sorry. Do, but do you got the email? I sent an email to Molly of what I think are most of the last trees that we planted. When did you send that? About two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. And so she. Oh, so I'm just saying that the tally is com is uh -huh. coming. Yep. All yes. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. Was, um, I may be able to do it tonight. And and I think that uh, the 
you and I might work through some of the inaccuracies by just going over some lists and seeing if we actually got everything. Okay. But it, it is probably over 270 trees. We ended up with five trees that were very plantable. We were ready to plant. We had that cold snap. Mm -hmm. And the snow and the snow. And, and it caused like, oh. kind of like a shock and awe. Like it was so cold that we just like ran away. Oh. Yeah. Um, whereas we, we could have come back, but mm -hmm. we just, we, we'll get on to the next thing. I think it, it's come up. Uh, we've switched from planting to pruning, and we've been very, Rich has been leading group after group. How do you feel group. this planting year went relative to the previous two, Rich? Or, sorry, Rob, you please? This year was great because the, um, the a lot of people have come through to, that are very organized. And some mm -hmm. of them are at the tables. Sue, who helps make mm -hmm. sure the volunteers show up. And, um, Jen, who actually came to many plantings, Jen brought students mm -hmm. to planting. All these pieces are coming together. It's a lot of little pieces. Um, so it's and not Rich like, on Saturday is mm -hmm. rich, more than any other season. Rich, mm -hmm. I think it was, you were probably there more than for previous years this year. Yeah, I would say I was more active this year just yeah. because I knew the fact that I was letting go of all the other mm -hmm. I just kind of made the time yeah I just made the time because it was definitely yeah. worth the effort so overall the, it's not so if you look at the numbers of how many people volunteered this year it's actually probably down mm -hmm. in terms of actual numbers of people maybe individuals but it's up in terms of there being handfuls of people who come over and over and get the work done and it includes um, both of you plant with Lily, right? Yeah. So on Sunday, like we plan on Saturday, we only get so many trees done, but then a tree or two gets done on Sunday. That that accumulates, like if you do that 10 weekends, that's 10 or 20, I don't know. Yeah. 20 and trees, yet, which could be 10% of the trees if you did it in spring and fall. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm doing rough numbers, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and so that's true, there's the Wednesday group, they, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so we've got like, mm -hmm things that are yeah. that are kind of becoming more institutionalized mm -hmm. in terms of how to get the planting mm -hmm. done. We've also had a big shift in that we think, Rich thinks, I think, that the bare root thing is planting is, mm -hmm. is going to work. We're very optimistic. Mm -hmm. That is another big boost in terms of getting good, good stock. Right. And, uh, I think we're considering doing that in spring and fall. There. Yeah, th yeah. So Rob and I actually took a trip over to uh, Amherst Nursery, which has moved now. They're in Hadley, actually, and they're no longer and no there. longer Amherst Nursery, I guess. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, it's the name of it, but they don't have a a, re a retail shop. Yeah, as far as you can tell. Oh, so we're going to their it's to all, their wholesale. Oh, oh. Yeah. He probably doesn't need the retail. So what Rob and I have, so now that we've moved and now we have a to have a different location, a larger land mass to use, uh, which actually we, we don't need a very large land mass, but Rob and I actually are thinking about possibly buying uh, what they call premium liners. Uh, which is a tree. Which little would tree. be a tree, little wow. tree that actually is already pruned properly to fit inside of a grow bag where we could actually buy whatever species we're looking for in the spring, get them delivered, put them in the grow bag, and then actually put our growing medium in there. Wait, is the grow bag the thing where the water goes, those green things? No, around? the grow bag is what, the, what, how, oh. what we take off when we're planting okay. and then actually grow the tree for uh, a, a summer, a season. Oh, oh, I see. And then actually harvest them in the fall all above ground. What would the advantage of that be? The advantage of that would be that we would be basically cutting out Amherst Nursery. Well, we would still use them for some. We would still use them, but we would, we would cut out our reliance upon whatever yeah. plant stock he has. Our reliance would be based upon exactly the plant stock that we want, uh -huh. which actually is the kind of the driver for us to get ahead of the game and actually have the planting location selected. So then we can find the right nursery stock instead of backing around uh -huh. the other way, instead of finding, well, I have this ginkgo here, but I have this little one right. foot tree belt, you know, I mean, that's kind of what we, I'm exaggerating, but that's kind of how we've been working because we've yeah. been, we've always been like trying to, catch up to the horse that's taken off from the cart with the horse and the, you know 
So if we were to do this, we could actually potentially a save quite a bit of money up front because the premium liners are, I think, uh, thirty to forty. Thirty to forty dollars. What's the what's the minimum per species? Can you, can you get like bubbles of ten, or can you get get to five point five? Something or? something that Rob and I are going to investigate. I, I don't have the answer. I was hoping to. We saw a couple of tags over there that he had from Robertson's Nursery, so I, I need to put some feelers out there mm -hmm. to figure out exactly where he gets the material from and how it works, but that's what he's done in Amherst. So that we went over there that day and Rob was trying to, Rob wanted me to see it uh, in my own eyes that he just has rows and rows and rows of different species of trees just above ground in grow bags. But, but when I was there in the late, I was there pretty late fall. I thought the season was over. He had these rows of trees. We went back, and there were rows and rows of trees missing too, already. Yeah. And, the, and those, which, just kind of speaks to the fact that they're flying out the door. So, yeah. and even if he had all the trees, even if we had a choice of all the trees, which we don't because there's DCR and there's other towns. Uh, if we had intended to plant ginkgo trees somewhere, th there aren't any. So even though he has several thousand um, trees over there, there aren't any ginkgo trees, just an right. example. Yeah. So you can't just get what you want, you get what's there. You just get, you get what's there and then you have to tailor your yeah. planting locations and then possibly not finish one of our priority streets. So if we select three other priority streets to plant next year and we end up needing, you know, I don't know, 150 underwire trees, we may only be able to get 75 of the species we want and we may be you know out of luck so doing it this way and it, was, it would take i think a few years for us to actually um develop this plan so we could actually have nursery stock in the spring to grow right. um i think what would happen is that we would we would try to do it with the premium liners we're gonna we're gonna experiment we're gonna get some try to find the premium liners experiment with uh you know I don't know, let's say 50 trees, let's say for example, of different species, and actually try to grow them ourselves. Yeah, yeah, where would we do that? Oh, I'm sorry. We, sorry we, would, we would do it at the cemetery because oh. we have to actually build an above ground irrigation system. Mm -hmm. So we have to actually build a holding area that would probably have to have a fence around it because there are a lot of deer oh, right. at the cemetery yeah. and they will just eat everything oh, in sight. Yeah. Um, and yeah, 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 I've never seen one. I actually I take that back. I have seen one up there, but um, so we would actually de designate an area there that we're never going to develop for anything else and just stay there because I would do underground irrigation. Um, and then we build a pen, but then we can always oh. add to it as we as, if the program is successful. Which, based upon what what uh, John is doing in Emerson Nursery, it is successful, in, in my opinion. So, can I just get make sure I understand yes. what you're saying? So, the new method would be you buy these little baby trees. They're, they're, they're not so little. Roots. They're like maybe seven or eight feet tall. Oh. They're about an inch in diameter. Yeah. But they're bare root trees. Is that right. But, they're bare root. And where would you get them from, the Amherst Nursery? No. Or somewhere no. else? That place in New York. We would buy them from wherever we could, wherever the sources there's there's like large nurseries yeah. that, they're called liners so okay. you can okay. buy you can buy liners so some so some you can nurseries plant them right in the field and then ball okay. and overlap them some you know this is kind of a newer the the grow bag is newer technology for the northeast and the, they've been growing trees like this in the farther south for a long time so by so buying liners you can get just exactly the kind you want right the species mm -hmm. that you want mm -hmm. so the, difference, the thing about a liner is that it's, it's instead of a bare root tree, which has roots, yeah. they cut them off actually. Mm -hmm. right. So that you don't get a lot of root. And that's why you have to put them in this grow medium that roots mm -hmm. into the tree bag and kind of protect them and let them re root out. And that's when you're planting trees with mm -hmm. on the Sundays that you've been doing. Right. You, there's some structural root and then there's a little fine root. Right. So you're going to get it with mostly just the structural root the, when you get the, the liner. And they're dormant. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're dormant. dormant. Oh, and the hope is harvest them and put them in right. the fridge. Right. Cool them. right. Yeah. And, so, oh. and so when they come, though, because of them having not that much. Wait, what time of year do you get them? We would get them in the spring, early spring. Okay. But because of the way they're harvested and the way they are small, they can put them in a box, mm -hmm. and you can get like a whole bunch. Yeah, twenty-five in a box. It's like 
like that. And then we would buy those bags. Those, what do you call them? Prime bags? Grow, grow bags. Just grow bags. You'd buy the grow bags and you would actually okay. put the root stock in. And how long would they be in those before we actually plant them? You would plant them in the fall. Okay, so, 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 so the goal would be to actually have the stip from cutting the roots and actually transporting them and then putting them back in the soil and having them wake up and um, you know have bud break. Mm -hmm. The goal would be to ha hopefully have a whole bunch of fibrous roots developed by you know the okay. end of September, where we actually would we would start to harvest them right. and actually use them in the field. And one of the the other um, I just had this lens with my tongue. Oh, one of the reasons that I would like to try this is because I, th I feel as if we were to try to do a, a, a nursery, a traditional nursery, I think we would probably struggle because we don't have the, we don't have enough staff to support it. And I mean that collectively between the staff that I have, the DPW full-time and part-time staff. Um, because then if we were to, even if we were to do it like they did in Burlington, so in Burlington what they do is they get the same thing, they get bare root trees, how they, if they clip them or not, I, I don't remember if they said they do that, but they actually put them in a growing, in a grow bag, in a grow medium, and they put them in the ground, and they grow them in rows. That's mm -hmm. what John was doing at Amherst Nursery. Wow. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna uh, grow them in, in bunches. We're just gonna tie them all together in one big giant bunch. So there's one oh. row right next to another row, next to another row. So they're all crushed, crushed together. Uh -huh. So they actually are forced to grow upright. Oh and they're actually easy to water and to maintain and you know Thursday morning Rob says I need 10 trees out of that row we just pull them out you don't have to pull them out of the ground you get them out you put them in the truck you so there's gonna in one grow bag it's gonna be multiple trees. no one, one tree one, oh. one tree per grow bag but they're all squished together okay Where it's like pot to pot yeah yeah, yeah. Right. So what, okay. what well, is, the, right. there are many species that you won't be able to harvest if you plant in the spring in the fall because it'll grow fast enough. Mm -hmm. the, which is true. So that's where we actually will wait till the next. We'll wait till the next year and then we'll fill in by using other nurseries right. either through Amherst or through Bear Root Stock. But I think it's a way for us to get some other stock that we, you know, I mean, like Rob and I walked around over there and I mean, there's a there's a gazillion crab apples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I personally don't really want to plant any more crab apples and nor do I want any other little trees that grow a lot of stuff from the stumps because you're well, there are a lot of, yeah I mean, you get all the columnar um, uh, um, yeah. tulip yeah. trees we want yeah. and yeah. there are so many things that are in great spot you, know, you can get all the maples in the world right you, you, get all, you can get all the maples you want you can get everything you want over there but the problem is is that until the nursery and until the nursery industry changes and People stop planting red maples in, in, in parking lot projects. Mm -hmm. um, right. This is what we're going to run into, right. and then and then you know, worst comes to worst, we're going to end up running down to uh, uh, you know the Robert Baker or down in Southfield uh, and actually Northern, Northern Nursery and get you know nice beautiful two-inch trees that actually all well, once we planted were very nice. But I mean, you need you know well, three three people to put them in a hole. But often the root structure is, and some of the root structure was poor. I yes, so. I, it's an it's gonna be an experiment, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think we're gonna. We're, I'd like to try it. Do we do we already know that we can use that parcel of land, or do we need permission? We're just home. Yeah, it's it's, it's just home. Uh, yep. <laughs> yep. We're not building a building. I don't need any site plan review. It's just the. Are there's all kinds of. Are stuff the trees out. stressed at all because of their roots being removed? That's a good question. No, I'm I'm you answer that. I mean, um, probably someone has figured out. So, so when they cut the roots off, like a lot of it is carbohydrate storage. So, someone has probably figured out mm -hmm. how much they can remove because you, because when the trees leaf out, it's like taking uh, food out of the storage yeah. pantry, yeah. you know, it comes right. comes out of the roots and goes up the stem, you know, that's what maple sugaring is. So, so somebody has probably figured out, you know, who's ever selling these liners, mm -hmm. they don't want it to fail, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So, I, I'm sure there's some, you know, variation in species and stuff, but... Um, there's a process here, because they're not just taking any old tree out of it, they're, they're growing for the purpose, so they're mm -hmm. like multiply cutting off them so that they're filling back in. In other words, they, and they're probably um, root pruning them. Like right Christmas tree. They're root, they're root pruning them and stuff. And so they're, they're essentially, if you think of pollarding, which is where you keep the top down, 
they're kind of doing the opposite. Mm -hmm. they're, oh. poly they're doing a pollarding of the, mm -hmm. of the roots of the, of the plant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's so why. How, what's the difference in price between uh, a um, premium liner and a bare root? Well, a bare root, when we buy them, they have roots coming, kind of coming out. And we get more root, and they're a bigger tree. And cost. And so uh, the cost is the bare root tree is like eighty nine dollars. Yeah. So it's twice the money for a bare root, but the, the dollar saving is insignificant here. It's, it's just that we, by getting them into bags, we can then plant them when we want to. Right. That's the just, right. So, so the bare root, we're just we have to actually get them in the ground in a set period of time before they dry out. Nice. So that's, that's the, the biggest key. limitation of oh, bare root. Bare, bare roots oh. are you get a huge root system. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, and um, they're very easy to put in the ground. You rarely get them with volunteers uh, too deep because you can see everything. Yeah. And um, it's a shallow hole. You know the disadvantage is that when you get them, you've got it. You can't heal them in. You gotta like plant them like really best within a couple of days of when you get them. Mm -hmm. So you have to be like organized, like what we did out there on Bridge Street. You yeah. know we were. You, not me, were organized. You were there. You <laughs> yeah, were I was there, but I didn't do the organization. And you know, yeah, we, we were talking up months in advance. Yeah, we were ready so to go. We asked people, they yeah, knew what we were talking go, about. There we was were, a reason. But yeah. we could, we could yeah. change if we can get up to 100 bare roots. In a, in a, you know, just well, I mean, in a few years, if we had if we had like 50 trained people mm -hmm. who leaders. all wanted to come out, we had enough leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, if we had like a whole bunch of leaders, a whole bunch of trained people, we could up the number from 30 to quite a lot more. Mm -hmm. Speaking of um, the planning piece, so ideally, Rich, would you and, and Rob, would you recommend that where we we've, we've talked about this at previous meetings, like where um, like sort of a year in advance, siting, plantings. And then selecting the trees, and then you guys are purchasing them. Well, doing, I think doing this method. again, I think as much as we try to have the actual planting location selected, and then we actually find that we determine what stock we want, and then we try to find it. I, I, I think we're just going to struggle with it a lot. I, I don't see that going away. I mean, I think we got a little better with it this year because we got the 32 trees from the nursery in uh, Orchard Park. Mm -hmm. But I think we are going to struggle to necessarily get the right stock every time for all these jobs that we want to fulfill. Mm -hmm. I think that's just going to be an issue. I, and I don't see it going away. The only way to really go it away is to have ready known available nursery stock to us that we have that we own and I think the only way to do that is a either to grow it ourselves in our own nursery or to try this method uh, where we actually see if we can get these premium liners um, and actually so so what we could do tech next month say for example we could decide that the three priority projects for this upcoming year are X Y and Z streets so then that would leave Rob and I this information. We need uh, 150 trees and we do our homework and we can't find any. So then we actually try to find the premium liners. Okay. And then we actually would import them here and then we would spend probably a, a, a couple of days or however long it would take to actually get them upright, fill the bags, put the, put the you liners. You do that with volunteers yep. or a school group or yep. boys And then actually get them placed, get them watered, and then we have the trees possibly for next fall. But as, as Rob has alluded to, depending upon what species it is, we may not be able to harvest it necessarily in the fall. But we can we can overwinter with them, just like John is doing now. A lot of those trees will just overwinter, and they're all clumped together, and they are somewhat protected because of their grouping. Um, Does he throw mulch on? Does he heal them in? Or Rob was going to ask him that question. They're, right now they're not healed in, but I'm actually wondering if he's going to. Yeah, I mean it would it wouldn't really be too it wouldn't be too difficult to do. You just take a roll apart. Yeah, yeah, I think he's good. Yeah. Are you talking about the trees that didn't get planted from this year? The ones that John at Elmhurst Nursery. Oh, which is hundred. Because you can't. The danger of leaving, like let's say you have a potted mm -hmm. plant, you know. I mean, this is why if you notice they put burlap around the around the planters that are out in Pulaski Park. That wasn't why they 
died. It was why they died is because the, the, the pot. pot freezes thaws, freezes yeah. thaws. Right. Big plants yeah. can't do that. Right. So yeah. it's a good effort to cover that, but that's not going to make any sense. Like a little like yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, that was to uh, keep the. Uh, so it's basically for, to keep the to keep the plants from desiccating. Yeah, uh, but, which is okay, but that's right. not going to. They're still going to. It doesn't change if the pots. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, 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 it's above so. ground, and I try to explain that to the right. landscape architect. Right. And <laughs> they were insisting that we put burlap on them, so I put the burlap yeah. around, sent them a picture, yeah. and said, here you yeah. go. Yeah. 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 So, All right. Well, I thought about the fall planting up, and we'll get a report from the <laughs> But I mean, so that, so that right. kind, of, kind of gives you a little bit of a window in, into what Rob and I are looking yeah. at, um, which obviously we're not going to make any decisions without talking to the full commission. but. I think we need to change, cha I think we need to really evaluate the way that we find nursery stock and this may be one way that might satisfy, yeah. Because Rob and I and Alicia, and I don't know if anyone else went to you, but we did a lot of hustling this year to find all the yeah. nursery stock that we got. And I mean, it was a hustle. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and a fair portion of it wasn't all that good. I mean, you experienced some of the and and the other thing too that I like about this is that the labor intensity of this is actually minimal. Mm -hmm. So when we get a we get an order from Amherst Nursery presently that are already in the grow bags, we they get delivered in our yard, and then we actually, cover, you know, we heal them in for the season, and then then we have to go dig them all up at based upon where the planting locations are, put them on a truck. This way here, they're above ground. There's no they're ready to go when we heal them in and whatever's left in the fall if we do this year we heal it in for the next year and that's that's the end of it it's so rich i'll i'll um relate to lily for the next agenda um as an item sure that um at yep. the next meeting uh, that's exciting identify three priority projects which mm -hmm. you guys can get more on okay yeah just for the record i think this i totally agree with this I think it really makes, makes yeah. sense and it's not going to fix 100% of everything but as far as species diversity and you know not having to yeah. run around I think it makes a lot of sense. Not to mention cost. Yeah. 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 I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah because at the, rate, at the rate we're going we're going to have to plant like 301 trees next year because <laughs> we, we keep doing this and yeah. I, every time i go to you know I, we get we had our growth award every year so yeah we got it the last two years and now you guys are really oh, putting the pressure yeah. on me and i'm like ooh, because this we planted 248 trees last year we'll have probably 290 mm -hmm. this year, yeah. somewhere in there possibly so then the following year we'll have to up that <laughs> or we'll have to do some other educational stuff to get score some other points to get over the score point threshold yeah. It's all about points, you know. Exactly. So, but anyways, sorry. Okay. All right. Um, the next um, item on the agenda is election of chair and vice chair. And before we discuss that, I thought it might be worth finding out who is available for a second meeting in December because it probably would be best to have all the commissioners present. Yeah. Um, but is any is anybody here interested in running for chair or vice chair? Um, okay. I'd be willing if no one wants. It. Excellent. No, if they're all in. and I'm not either, so <laughs> you're not. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got other things I gotta focus on. I want. I still want to serve. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a couple the reason this is on the agenda is because Lily and I spoke about this last week and she really would like to pass the gavel to mm -hmm. another commissioner. Um, is Todd interested? No, I don't think so. I, I'm not sure what Todd's uh, game plan is. He's, I'm not sure if he's actually, I'm not sure if he, I'm not sure he may serve, I don't know if he's, I haven't talked to him so I can't answer for him. I have spoken to him, not this year, but the previous year. He was couldn't be forced to do it. No. <laughs> I shouldn't put it right. Wait, he wait, he was at, he was clearly not going to do it last year. But, so I don't. I, think I, that, we, that would be someone will have to approach him. Would you serve as vice chair? I would serve as vice chair um, if if he wasn't. I I think he's doing a good job. So if yep. he wants mm -hmm. to do that again, but if we need a vice chair, I'd be willing to do that. No, no. 
Okay. Uh, all right, so. Um, so we just. We'll, so we'll, I guess. So Lily want the, the bottom line is Lily wants to step down. Yes. We don't know whether Todd would want to continue, would want to move up to be the chair I, 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 I or don't, would want to stay. I don't as believe vice. he wants to be chair. I know that okay. for as much, but I don't okay. know if he would be willing to stay as vice chair okay. or not. But Lily did say that she would like to pass the gavel. Okay. And certainly Todd's knowledge and experience in government and process is really valuable. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. If oh, there yeah. was a way he would be willing to. Yeah. Right. Great. Okay. So we just need to find who, out. Who here is available for December 19th? So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're interested in sharing, I'm interested in vice chairing, and we're not sure about time, and that will vote next meeting. And one thing I was going to suggest is if anybody's interested, maybe just write a short statement. Okay. Say one more. Okay, I'd be willing to yeah. do vice chair if someone else wanted to do chair. Okay. Or, um, so you're suggesting a short statement? Yeah. But would they be willing to be chair? I'd be willing to do okay. it, yeah. So when you speak to Lily, you're going to also somehow find out, if, like if Todd's not going to be here next week, the 19th, or we know he is. If he's not going to be here, he's not going to be here. So, we, someone should reach oh, out yeah. and communicate with him. What okay. Is, yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll reach out to Todd. Because I'm going to be right back where we were. Right. Or, yeah, 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 we need more information. I'll ask with most of us to select okay. candidates. I don't, I mean, well, Lily didn't ask me to ask this, but I just thought it might be nice if anybody's interested in serving in either as chair or vice chair. It might be nice just to have a, have a three sentence statement. Just <laughs> for the group. I want to run because. What's your plan? <laughs> 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 nice. It could be tough, you know, if you keep baking, we might have to elect you chair first. Really, really? Yeah, 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 yeah I was sort of pushing chair. I mean, yeah. uh, Vice cookie maker. <laughs> if you wanted to take new, new chair, I'm new committee. You know, I'm flexible. I would. Okay, another option is co-chairing. Well, is that in this yeah, structure permitted? I don't know. I can't remember. Is the commission a uh, set of bylaws that it runs by? Did we develop a set of bylaws in the beginning? I don't remember. Jeez, that's. Tested my memory. This is like well, four years ago. Yeah. We don't remember. Don't oh, but it was years ago. Wouldn't it be on our oh, on the page on our website? Uh, I don't think yeah, it is. It? I don't think so. I've gone on that website quite a few. times. I have no yeah. idea. I, I have no memory of that. But I really like Junior Hampton's website. It's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the best memory. This, this is live. We have a charter behind. We need to fix that website. Up. I'm sorry. What? We have a charter. Yeah, the ch yeah. So that doesn't that just establish says, authorities and responsibilities. Yeah. It may it may in there it may be oh, in there that there has to be some sort of number of persons. That, you know, we might have a format for. Our, I think it's more like huh? our charties. It's not it's so our much. Charges. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, we could check. Yeah. The mayor would know that, right? Because it's commission. Well, Lily will know. Oh, Lily will know, yeah. Right. Yeah, and Todd too. Right. Oof, All yeah. right. So, touch base with them about that. There will be a meeting in two weeks on the 19th. On the 19th. The 19th. Okay. And we'll all have chair and vice chair, then I'll reach out to Todd to see if he's interested in the rerun. Okay. And can you also, um, when you're talking to him and Lily, can you ask if they know if we can have a co chair just so we have that oh, other yeah, piece of information? Yeah. Thanks. And yep. if Todd wanted to be chair, you could ask him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That, not to be chair, or chair. Yeah. Very good. Okay, Trina, our hands are not Personally, I've been a little on the sideline. I've been all busy, but um, a lot's been going on. Yeah, so. <laughs> Rob and other volunteers. Alicia. Right, so we've had a, a regular volunteer group, the Wednesday group, that's now has come out twice. Uh, for pruning, so wow. they 
transition to Peru, which is nice. And oh. Rich has been there both times. That's awesome. Today we proved it was a beautiful day. Today we had, oh, there were probably Ken and Rich and myself, who were probably either eight of us out there, mm -hmm. or maybe nine. Wow, that's a big Yeah, yeah, and we, uh, the weekend, the week before, it just the wind was so high that even my mid cap just blew off all the things. And yet they showed up again. So yeah. so that's good. And Rich is encouraging Tree Northampton the volunteers to come to, to also start working on Village Hill again. Mm -hmm. He'll come on Tuesday on Village Hill. So we're really planning three days a week to be printed. Uh, about two hour sessions. So that's pretty good though. Yeah. Um, it's just really enough to get cold and not, not enough to get frost mm -hmm. Right. You're, exactly. you're pruning trees that we've planted in. Not yet. We we would will be, but uh, just uh, what happened was that there was not much of a young tree training program, and so we are still catching up on trees that were let go essentially to grow however they did. And so we've been up at uh, Florence Field mm -hmm. uh, pruning trees there. And those trees were planted five years ago or six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they're, yeah. you know, we're there a little late, but Rich is there with ladders. We're able to get up there and take care of them. And if I understand correctly, there's uh, the emphasis on this is training yeah. these sessions mm -hmm. that have been going on. It's mm -hmm. more yeah. weighted on training than production. Uh, absolutely. Okay. So um, we're trying to get a core of people who can prune. I mean, we, we actually had Bob Goss there uh, wow. way before, so uh, I was pretty well trained with Rich and Bob, and so I now help train people, but they always start with Rich. So I was Rich, spends a couple hours with them, or a little longer, and then eventually I go off sometimes, or whatever, so we're kind of... Molly asked who Bob Goss was. Oh. Bob Goss is um, someone who, what street company? He used to work for Shumway, Shumway and Son. Oh, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. He's definitely master a pruner. senior master pruner. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he has a wonderful disposition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The volunteers really like him. Wow. Yeah. He just knows yeah. a ton. I mean, he's really? like a, I don't he's, know what you'd call you know, him. I introduced yeah, him last time. Mean, he was a little, I'm not sure he liked it. And I said, here's someone with you know more than half a century of experience doing that. <laughs> I don't know how he felt about it. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, it Sounds like a compliment. I thought it was a compliment. I mean, he has a particular um, special value in that he does it all from the ground. With He has all these ways of working from the ground. Oh. So, uh, I mean, he used to be, I've seen him climb. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen him climb like giant trees and take mm -hmm. them down, but he's now retired from that scene. So what days of the week um, besides Wednesday do you do the pruning? So we do Saturday morning at 10, and we do, uh, we have not done, but we are planning to start doing Tuesdays at 1. Tuesdays at 1? At Village Hill, that's Village Hill, Tuesdays at 1. I mean, other people can come, but Village Hill, there are a group of people up there that have been very enthusiastic. We never finished up there, so we want to go up and finish Village Hill. And, uh, and Wednesday, is there, if people want to join on Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday, or that's fine. Yeah, that, yeah that's also, it, that's also at 10. Where do you meet? Well, we've been, we are now currently working at Florence Field. Oh. And uh, Florence Field is very large, they have full of yeah. cars. Florence Fields is? It's the new fields the next to the? Um, the Road 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 yeah, across. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, we've done uh, probably 20 trees there, and we're probably another 20 to do. Wow. So if you want to, just come to Florence Field at 10 o'clock. And if you do come, that is organized by Paul Thaler, that Wednesday group. Paul Thaler. Doctor? Yep, Dr. Dr. Paul Thaler is the organizer yeah. of that. And so you'll want to make sure you get on his oh. uh, email list. All right, anything else with Grove or um, Grove Northampton? Tree Northampton? Grove? Oh, Tree Northampton? No. I think it is. But, uh, That's super. It sounds like a great. I will, I'll just throw in that. Um, We've been putting in the fall, I think since the last meeting, and I don't think I mentioned anything in the meeting prior to that, um, spent some time putting the putting the tree Northampton tree nursery mm -hmm. to bed for the winter, but there's still a little bit more work to 
to do protecting trees. But um, yeah, we have some more work yet to do up there. Yeah. 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 But you've um, done a lot. Work. Some it really good. small trees were donated and put in and um, just done moving all bought more mulch on. And our forty trees there, which are coming oh, yeah. That's great. So that'll end it. There you go. Excellent. Um, okay. Any updates on the planning schedule <coughs> and subcommittee? Meetings or work? Mm -hmm. Molly, Lily, and I are going to meet, I believe, a week from Friday, the 14th. Mm -hmm. And, and um, thanks for bringing, thanks for bringing this, Rich. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, any other business? What no. about, oh, what about, yeah, under other business? Yeah. What about this? The ordinance? Yeah. yeah the ordinance. Have so, you seen this now? Yeah, well, actually, it didn't, uh, it didn't make it onto the agenda oh. because it was something that Carolyn Mish had sent me. Okay. Um, so I can just briefly uh, address this. Uh, so this is, an existing ordinance and I can't look it up so I can't give you all the information because I can't figure out how to turn my wife on okay. this thing because it got shut off yesterday in the transition. Mm -hmm. So this really has to do with um, site plan approval to actually install PV ground mounted on a parcel with any building use provided that the PV is sized to generate no more than the greater of 100% or 12 kW. Mm -hmm. So, site plan approval required for the following for all zoning districts. So this is an ordinance that already exists, and I'm sorry that I don't have the original one, but as you can see in here, the red is the changes to the ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, they are actually looking to change this. Um, the removal of timber on the parcel. Which which uh, ones? Are, which numbers are the changes to that? Red. Out in black and white. They're red. So just. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought they were blue. Oh, oh, do you need that? Uh, I didn't read it. Uh, didn't you get a copy of the? Uh, so what's the context of this? Is this so, where if um, so companies are coming in wanting to? So really, so really, what it is? It's, it's, oh, it's, got it's, it. It's a control mechanism to avoid people buying large tracts of land and actually just deforesting them and putting PV on them. Uh, and one, you know, the cha on the back here, um, so presently right now, you are allowed to actually install a uh, PV if it's under 25,000 board feet of timber. So basically they have to come in and do a survey, figure out how many board feet of timber there are, um, and it's allowable. Uh, under 25,000 board feet of lumber, which is really just a very small system. So 25,000 board feet is... How much lumber you would mill out of it? About how many? Is that 100 so trees? It's usable, it's it's usable, usable lumber. It's usable lumber. So if you have a whole ah. a whole bunch of really small trees, they could just... Oh. And it doesn't count. Oh, so it's usable, usable, lumber. usable lumber. Not just yeah. firewood, but timber. Right. Yeah. Right. So wow. So it's got. So you could take out a bunch trees. of other stuff. Yep. And it, it wouldn't. It would go under the radar here. Right. So how many board feet is? It's hard uh, to say. Twenty-four inch You're diameter right. mature tree. You really can't. I can't. I couldn't yeah. can't get it. Five hundred. Well, let's say if you if, it, if you got a, just imagine if you got like a forty foot board, call fifty foot board. And you got ten of them out of a tree. But it depends on how where the Those branches are, you know, where it branches yeah. out, yeah. how low the ground branches yeah. out, all that So, so the, I think before we go we get too deep into this, I think I need to do a little more research for all okay. of you. And the other thing is, is that I got an email right at the end of the day today from Carolyn. They're actually gonna make a uh, suggested change which is gonna require uh, on here somewhere, it's not on here at the moment, 
um, if there was a site permit that, so basically the significant tree ordinance applies mm -hmm. to all of this. Mm -hmm. So they have to have, they have to mitigate for the loss of oh. these trees. If they're above If they're above 25,000 or feet of timber. Oh. But I think what Jen's pointing out is if you have a lot of non-timber trees, right. you just clear out yeah, right acres. There. So I think what I need to do is I need to, I haven't had a chance to really look at the existing ordinance. And I didn't get that to you because again, my computer, the existing ordinance is in black on here. So which is on the agenda next? Yep. Is there a reason why it went to, to board feet as supposed to be yeah. in? I think it's always been board feet. I don't, I don't think right. that. Well, can, can we? Because the significant, it is a little difficult because I could, the significant tree ordinance is in DBH and this is in board feet. So that's a highly, you know, you could have, you could have some kind of multi-stem, mm -hmm. you Good know, point. tree that's branching out low to the ground that's enormous of some non-desirable um, timber species mm -hmm. yeah. that is actually a big tree that is valued for carbon sequestration and right. stormwater mitigation and oxygen, et cetera, et cetera, that could be like kind of worked around legally right. because they are and we're not comparing i think it's problematic that the significant tree ordinance even though it applies they you are not talking not, about the same apples, measurement apples yeah. apples. you're not talking about the same That's measurement yep. so also I also i would question the use of the word timber versus um wood because um timber from a forestry perspective is like just the high quality stuff that you sell for flooring and stuff like that. It, yeah. You could like the kind of tree you're talking about, like a big old mm. pine or something that's mm. really knotty, that wouldn't be timber. It would be pulpwood. So Correct. it wouldn't even be counted in here at all. Right, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Because it's not, it's a, a lumber person looks at it and it's right. like, forget that. I'm right. You're trying to broken that. off with some big burls yeah, 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 in yeah, it right. and, and yeah. knot holes. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, uh, vacancies. So, so the, right. the other thing that uh, yeah. Carolyn mentioned to me today via email was the fact that uh, they may make a recommendation on here as well as that if they are, if they have a special permit and they're allowed to do this and they meet all the criteria that they have to leave all the stumps and the oh. ground is undisturbed uh -huh. because the amount of carbon that's actually in the oh, soil yeah. and the amount of carbon that's actually in the stump and the root system itself. Mm. Huh. So that would be another way to act, and plus it would also yeah. avoid all the machinery and all the rubbing. And they're not root breaking out the whole thing. They're, that's right, and yeah. then they're not actually disposing of the mm. stumps. That's a good idea. Interesting. Burning them, mm. s s crushing, basically. Yeah. In this, in this state, that's you can't burn stumps, you can't bury them. Mm -hmm. So you have to actually use this, what they call us, uh, like a, uh, an excavator to grind them, up. grind them up and put them in a tub grinder or use a, a stump screw that actually screw, makes screws them into smaller pieces so you can actually put them into a, a tub grinder. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that would be added to just kind of actually keep the carbon in mm -hmm. the soil and actually mm -hmm. hopefully allow the stumps and the roots to actually decay over a period of time and mm -hmm. release the carbon a lot more slowly and hopefully the soil can absorb it mm -hmm. just because of the natural processes instead mm -hmm. of making this man-made mess. Mm -hmm. Which can you send us this electronic version? I will send it to you electronically once they make the other yep. the, the other recommended changes and a little bit of a narrative okay. to give you a little background. Yeah, so I apologize for the here it is and figure it out yourself type Positive. email. So so the email had the front page, the facing page, but did the email have not the back page? It should. Is that what you're saying? It should. No, no, it's it's just that the the additional change that was brought to my attention today is not on there. So you oh, basically, with the stumps. Yeah, so you can basically take this document and throw it away and we'll start over again. So okay. who or what entity introduced the language that Todd asked about? Um, planning board. Planning board. Plan, planning board. It's, pro it's probably an it's a industry standard, I would imagine, of some sort. I can find that out for you. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. It does actually it doesn't make sense to have board feet versus DBH. If you're up, if you're saying that the significant tree ordinance applies, because some um, legal person is going to like, shh, yeah, you know, go right around it because they could argue some way that it's not. Yeah, it's a good point. Okay. All right. Any other business? 
before we review our to do's? Oh, I just have one yep. quick new business comment that Rob and Rich and I met with um, Leah Broder, who is who is a um, concerned uh, citizen in Ando, no uh, Arlington. Arlington, and uh, is interested was interested in talking about Tree Northampton, and we spent you know over an hour with her. She was really grateful. Um, got a lot of information that she's taking back to her tree warden and to the tree commission that they have there and so those are really I felt really good I don't know how to, I felt good yeah. about that we were able to offer what we had figured out and things that were worked and didn't and so she was she was pretty grateful so oh it's what it was great because we had no it was good because we had kind of a yeah. representation yeah. from yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean yeah Plenty. They have a pretty active program, don't they? They hosted two years ago. They, they, um, she said they planted 150 trees this past year. Um, but they also, she said, they also unfortunately planted uh, large, you know, large species trees under wire. under wires oh. everywhere. Lots of state Which is which is very confusing to me if you oh. have a tree warden that has the kind of experience that I think that person has. Yeah. It was also confusing to me as to whether they really planted 150 trees because she said they planted 150 bare root trees. Yes. Which it just it's a lot of it just seems like how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so so but, I, but maybe they did it and then they moved to learn. From them. But I think maybe she had it wrong. She's from the outside. She's coming in as like a Landscape architect? Yeah, she's her. Oh, yeah. okay. She's I met her at this yeah. tree steward. I went to the tree steward training at this mm -hmm. past so fall and met her, and she came and asked me um, if she could come and find out. Oh, you okay. Know, so. so she's trying to, to, to be the more on the tree Northampton mm -hmm. side, you know, yeah. trying to understand what they're already doing. She's not what the DPW is doing. She's not really totally up on what they're doing. Yeah, I think she was looking for some information so when she goes to speak to mm -hmm. the yeah, tree she, board and she yeah, has us yeah. can slowly possibly introduce things that that have worked for others. Um, trying not to they have a tree, they have a nine person tree committee. They have a tree warden, he's part of the DPW, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. so um, best practices, like it seems yeah. like some of the best practices aren't really being followed. Yeah. So yeah. Which I, which I think is 40,000 people. Yeah, yeah, 40,000. Yeah, 40, yeah. It's not yep. that different than us. So it was yep. good for them to come to go yep. I'm curious about what they're doing. Too. Yep. And, and and I do want to follow up if they're really planting 150 barrel of trees. How are they doing? How, yeah. I just want to see how, how do they do that. Yeah. You know, and I might mean they have like a machine that scoops the earth out and stuff the tree in. I know Rob and I were kind of racking our brain trying to figure out how mm -hmm. they did 150 trees. And yeah. And she said that they're the four person crew that they have. Four person did, crew, right. Which I mean potentially, you know, we did a we did a thirty two in one day. Yeah. But that was with a whole bunch of volunteers yeah. digging yeah. by hand, so I don't know, you know, that would be basically like we could we could do that with the same volunteers three days in a row. We could mm -hmm. maybe get to hundred and fifty. But we really have to have everything, you know, every, all the sites selected, staked. You know, we have to make sure all the holes were dug. We have the water there, all the mulch is there. You know, yada yada yada. But maybe they're doing that. Yeah. They might be, but it'd be, I'm interested to see how they. And we actually, uh, I rec I suggested, or I told her that I would actually want to go out and speak to their commission if oh, they wanted to, oh, yeah. and the tree warden. So we'll see what comes of that. Great. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, to do. Who would like to start? Between now well, and the next meeting, I'll start. I just have to do the thing I didn't do last year. <laughs> and, and I think when, when you do it, then we should check our lists together. Like, go, I'll, yep. I'll, I'll look at it and I'll look. Well, my spreadsheet, the spreadsheet that I do is available to look at. Right, I'll, I'll look so at it. So you just have to, I'll tell you when it's done and you can look at yes, it. Yes, exactly. And, and tell you me when it's done. Organize the data whatever way you want. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to look for trees that I forgot to send to that's my data. Ah, okay. Okay, Rob. Besides doing that? That's all I'm going to do. Okay. It's like and you're doing pruning still? Three days a week. Three days a week. We're, we're <laughs> organizing all. pruning. Thank you. And I'll continue to do that. I think that over the holidays, we're going to skip a bunch of those mm -hmm. going to be some skipping. And so it really in January, we'll start out more consistent. All right. Um, Just between now and next meeting, though. Okay. A few yeah. more of those. 
Yeah, okay. a few more. Yeah. Uh, my last to-do list was to reach out to the, there's a guy in the planning department in Chicopee who has worked with Nita Basic and I, I emailed him and I didn't get a response, so I'm going to uh, try to phone call him and email him again. What's summer. the issue? Uh, that he has some experience with CU Soil and worked oh. with Nina Bassett right. in some capacity. Right. So um, uh, yeah. Lily asked me if I'd reach out to him to see, you know, as a backup if we're trying to figure out these situations that he has more experience. We can just tap into yeah. his experience. So I will reach out to him again. Um, working with Rob. And you're going to bring, apparently have a, a student from UMass that's going to do it? Yeah, actually I was just looking up, there's a gentleman named uh, Ryan, he's a master's student with Community Forestry, he's working with Dr. Brian Kane at UMass, and he's actually uh, reaching, he's going to reach out to us to uh, help him create his, help him fill the gaps in his thesis. So he's uh, studying on the amount of hourly training a citizen pruner volunteer would need to assess the pruning needs and actually prune small public owned trees. Oh, wow. So that's early just, training needed. Yeah, we're trying to figure that out right now. Yeah, yeah. right. Wow. And the volunteer too. So, so that, so that, so that's <laughs> right. I'm working with that, and just I'm going to get you the actual correct ordinance change oh, yeah. so you can get that. Thank you. Uh, neighborhood planting. I'm not going to do anything on that until our next meeting, when you actually you all have a discussion about well, how you want to do with. Well, it. you and I are going to go look on the road street. See yes, right okay. on our to-do list. Rob and I are going to go to Monroe Street to see could we plant yeah 30, 30, 20 or thirty trees. You know, where to report back next. Yes, okay. to try to report back next yeah. meeting yeah. and whatever else I said I was going to do that I haven't done yet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All right. So. It's like Molly. Whatever I forgot to do last yeah. time, I'll do it the next time. Right. I like that default. I yeah. don't have anything in oh. specifically assigned. I can give you something. Okay, you can write a little <laughs> statement while you want to. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> One thing. Anything else, Rich? No, I'm sure. <laughs> right. I'm sure I can say this <laughs> something via email. Okay, I'm going to reach out to Todd, see if he's interested in running again for the vice chair or perhaps for the chair. And I'm going to just email Lily and I'll copy you, Rich, on um, things for um, agenda items. Okay. Next time, which includes, I noted three things, next steps for the neighborhood tree planting, um, putting those pieces together, um, three priority projects for 2019, if our subcommittee meets, mm -hmm. maybe we can oh, yeah. propose that, and then the third thing, oh, the ordinance discussion for that. Yeah. Yeah. And Beth has one to-do list, to oh, yeah. to actually get the, the plan of the plan on the back of the agenda. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's stressful. Get your glasses like out. <laughs> it will be tiny. <laughs> okay, just in the nick of time. Next Thank slide. you for sharing. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, it's like you're stepping up. Yeah. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Um, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Favor. In favor. In favor.